here's a bit of information that might sting a little. If you invested just $100 in Bitcoin in 2012, you would now have $482,666.67 today. The growth shows that they're here to stay. But the question is, what happens if Bitcoin becomes the world's only currency? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the f*** is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency that was created in 2009 by an unknown person using the alias Satoshi Nakamoto. If I were to take a crack at his true identity, nah, I don't know. Nicholas Cage. Bitcoin is a digital cryptocurrency that can be transferred from person to person through the internet without going through a bank. The Bitcoin network is secured by people called miners, which is a third person that verifies its transaction between a buyer and a seller. Every verification is then recorded as a code that is then put onto a public ledger where anyone can review the code, creating the perfect transparency with the spending and advanced security. Now you might think that we already have digital currency like PayPal or even credit cards, but the difference again is that this currency is completely independent of banks and the government, which is key. While credit cards and PayPal is digital, it's still moved as currency that belongs to a certain country without the security or speed to instantly use it across the world without a bank slowing down the process. So far, the black market on the internet and Bitcoin seem to go synonymously like Bill Cosby and leaving your drink unattended. They both lead up to unwanted illegal activity. You got the wiggles and the jiggles all over the place. Hackers ransoming companies for Bitcoin has been a recent problem, where even Disney was hacked and held ransom with the threat of releasing Pirates of the Caribbean if Disney didn't pay for their demands in Bitcoin. Which is kind of ironic because that's what real pirates do. Minus all the rape, bloodshed, and early childhood onset diabetes from their frosted sugary cereals. All part of this complete breakfast! However, this is currently based on a system where Bitcoin isn't the only form of currency. If Bitcoin becomes the only form of currency, then it's a totally different story. The real nature of Bitcoin leaves perfect paper trails and proof of activity because of the nature in which Bitcoins encode every transaction. Therefore, if no other forms of currency existed, it wouldn't be as easy to convert and launder the Bitcoin into another form of value or currency. Also, if Bitcoin were the only currency to exist, countries would probably enforce stricter account creation that ties to a person's real identity for the sake of preventing tax evasion, so people wouldn't be able to create anonymous accounts as easily. All purchases would be transparent, and that puts a real damper on illegal activity. Dark web and black market in general would either cease to exist or have to adapt a new barter system to exchange their goods for something other than money in order to hide their illegal activity. Like for every photo of an underage child you buy, you'd have to ship the seller a loaf of bread, or an equally enticing picture of your younger self. Keep in mind that the fight against the dark web isn't an infringement on your legal rights to purchase things anonymously. I'm not talking about your right to buy Korean bootleg DVDs or fake iPhones. I'm talking about the more serious illegal items like drugs, dangerous weapons, bombs, and every person in Liam Neeson's immediate family. But it is a good question to ask how people would then feel about having all their purchases in open book. Anonymous spending would cease to exist. There are definitely benefits to having currency that doesn't leave a paper trail. Bitcoin did, after all, have a key role in helping anonymously fund WikiLeaks, an outcome that had good results. Also, some people like to just do positive things like donate to certain charities, but for some personal reason, not want to have their names affiliated with an organization with strong political or social ties. A wife may ask her husband why he's donated so much money to the LGBT Foundation and wonder if it's the same reason he calls her Chad during foreplay. The Chad. A poll taken in Britain showed that 70% of Britons would not be happy if government agencies had record of their spending. They valued privacy. But then again, what the f*** does privacy with your spending really mean? What are you trying to hide? Everything is happening in every country. It's like, every, like you've, got, you've got the Iraqi law. When someone invites you over to their house and tells you, Oh, you're welcome to go into any room. Except for the one with the soundproof door locked with padlocks and a chain. Your first thought isn't that it's a wine cellar. It's probably a sex dungeon. 
But whether it's a secret human centipede farm, or just a surprise present for your spouse, secret spending would be eliminated for better or for worse. If credit cards and loose cash no longer exists, there's all of a sudden much less reason for burglars to hold you up on the streets or break into your home. They could force you at gunpoint to transfer Bitcoin to them, but that would just leave direct evidence and paper trail to the fact that they just robbed you. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Because each transaction isn't just between you and the seller, multiple signatures in the chain allow a transaction to be accepted by the network only if a certain number of defined groups or persons agree to sign the transaction. This then allows for better mediation if there's ever a dispute of a transaction or any fraudulent charges taken from a shady business. Savings on you! But of course, every time something is dealt in digital form, there's always that fear of hackers being able to manipulate computers somehow to have access to it. Has Bitcoin been hacked in the past? Well, yes and no. There are often misconceptions about thefts and security breaches that happen on diverse exchanges and businesses. None of them involve Bitcoin itself being hacked, nor imply inherent flaws in Bitcoin. For example, if a bank gets robbed in some spectacular shootout heist, nobody ever thinks, it's that damn cash. There must be a better way. Damn that cash. No, the fault is the bank security itself. Theoretically, there is no way to hack a Bitcoin that belongs to someone and somehow make it their own. There are only a handful of cases where there was a Bitcoin theft, and quite often it was due to a security breach in a secondary software program used to move the money or keep passwords. But then again, that does show that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and the more security will definitely need to be put into place to constantly combat different ways people can lose money. Poor people are going to have it pretty tough through the beginning transition of Bitcoin taking over the world. Panhandling for money isn't as simple as it seems. You have to try and get sympathy with just a sign. But you can't just make it too flashy, otherwise no one is going to give you money to someone who can just afford glitter and bedazzle jewels on their signs. You can use humor, but like Chris Rock says, don't give money to a homeless person if they have a funny sign. A real homeless person is too hungry to be funny. So it's tough. Now imagine trying to find sympathy for a homeless guy who's waving around a smartphone asking for Bitcoin transfers. You don't want to help tech-savvy homeless people. You want to help the crippled Oliver Twist begging for another bowl of warm water that can be imagined as soup. There are actually countries that either implement smartphone programs for homeless, like South Korea. There would definitely have to be some sort of transition period where people would get used to seeing the homeless ask for money that is in another form other than loose change, and see smartphones as the way to do it. But even before then, Bitcoin is already showing a lot of benefits to the homeless. Jesse Engel is homeless, living on the streets of Pensacola, Florida. Through a program called Bitcoin Git that drives artificial traffic to certain online clips, Angle gets 0.00004 bitcoins, or about half a cent for every video he watches. He can watch up to 12 videos a day, which gets him about 6 cents. And then he can beef up his daily take with Bitcoin Tapper, a mobile app that doles out about 0.000133 bitcoins a day. On top of that, there are other apps that allow for digital currency rewards through surveys that pay out change here and there. There's a weird dance when it comes to tipping on both ends. We pawn the money or try and discreetly slip it to the service without being noticed. It's usually accepted with a small nod of the head and the two part ways like nothing happened. Even with strippers. I mean, every now and then someone makes it rain. But rappers aren't always at strip clubs. Rappers also participate in clothed events too. But tipping a stripper is awkward in itself. Some dude on Perfect Road timidly holds out a bill, and the dancer has to break routine and somehow seductively take the bill without looking greedy. Money transfers would need to adapt in a way where it would be quick as tapping a card, or possibly a wearable accessory that isn't a phone. It'd have to be something you don't have to pull out of a bag or wait for an app to load. Possibly a pay watch or even a ring that people could wear just to do quick transfers. Asking someone to take out their phone, ask for their account ID, and then wait for both parties to confirm transaction could already be too much hassle for a customer to bother doing and could really kill a tip. No banks, no government, no problem. The best change begins with economies that have experienced high inflation, very poor fiscal health, or a crisis in public confidence. 
The culprit of most economic evils is the national printing press. The ability that governments have to just print off more money whenever they feel like it, whether they need it or not, use it towards something useful or not, or even for corrupt purposes is the main cause of inflation. The more money that's printed off, the more debt a country incurs, the higher the cost of everything goes. And most of the time, the citizens don't even know why. With Bitcoin as the only currency, governments will no longer be able to water down citizen wealth by running the printing press, or borrow against unborn generations. Instead, they will need to collect every dollar that they spend, or convince bondholders that they can repay their debts. Because Bitcoins can't be created on a whim, governments will be forced to spend what they have, and most importantly, transparently, as every dollar is on record. Hey, thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please subscribe to see all of our new content that will be coming out. Give us a like and share it with a friend for a chance to enter our channel's Bitcoin giveaway where the winner will receive 100 Bitcoin chocolates. They're just as yummy as a real Bitcoin. <laughs>